You're listening to the Pillaging Podcast, a companion podcast to pillagingjustforfun.com. That's pj4f.com, the only Raider fan site made by Raider fans for Raider fans. Tune in every week on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio. Call in and leave a message to be played on air at 408-909-PJFF. Brought to you every week by Creative Media Design Studio. Check them out at creativemediamonterey.com. Yo, it's time to pillage another podcast. I'm your host, Kenny Stapler, joined as always by your boy, Che. What's good, Kenny? How you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm feeling extra positive right now for some reason. Uh, Yeah, I mean... mean you got to feel positive. You got to try to feel positive, got, right? I mean, this is it. This is do or die. Backs against it, the wall. This is it. We're, we're, we're against the wall. And who better than to uh, help us out than the Chargers? Thank you very much. <laughs> um, just just a couple quick hits. Um, first off, shout out to all the pillagers out there. I was at the game last week. We had an epic tailgate. Um, we have folks come in from Nevada, uh, Seattle. Um, who else did we have out there? We had uh, Pittsburgh, California. We had the Bay Area representing Santa Clarita. Um, shout out to uh, Miles, who was on Reddit. Um, he came out. He joined us, him and his lady, first ever home game. And they didn't know where to go, so I said, we'll take care of you. Come on out. There you go. Uh, who else did we have? We have Portland representing out at the game. And um, I'm, f- I'm forgetting a couple people. Oh, Colorado out at the game. Uh, normally embedded deep in enemy territory. Nice. Uh, so 303 Raider out there. Um, Eternal Pessimist was out there. We had Raider Brent out there. We had Raider Kane, as always, Raider Forever out there. Uh, Hawaiian Raider was out there. Dang, I'm just I'm going to miss names. We had um, St. Kaufman was out there. These are all blog handles, by the way. You can, you can check these dudes out over at PJ4F.com. So it was cool. Uh, I was slanging T-shirts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first run is is officially sold out. If you're interested in, in getting that design that's out there on pj4f.com slash shop, go ahead and order. They'll probably make it to order for you. Um, I do have some white shirts, and we're going to be coming with some new colors, and we got a brand new design we're going to release here shortly. Woo! Uh, I have a feeling if we get the W, that that, that new design is going to be quick. Yeah. Real quick right. release. Real quick release. <laughs> so that's a brand new design. Quick we- release, just like Derek Carr. Man. Quick, <laughs> quick release. release, Derek Carr. That's the Derek Carr signature series. <laughs> um, so yeah, man, that's 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 where we're at right now. Uh, it's looking good. Thanks for all the support to everybody out there. Um, you guys have been great. Uh, Instagram is the Pillaging Podcast. Just search that, and we'll come up. There's only one Pillaging Podcast. There's only one. So holler at, at us out there. We're doing our. Uh, our breakdowns, our quarter by quarter breakdowns. Yeah, I didn't get, man. I didn't get you guys all of them this weekend because I was out there at the Coliseum. And let me tell you, it was hot. It was, <laughs> Ooh, it was hot. And, and we had mentioned this before <clears throat> Levi Stadium. I get to complain. Oh, it's hot. We're over in the concession area. It's nice and shady out there. <laughs> and uh, you, you know, it was hot in Alameda <laughs> County on Sunday. And uh, we were out there, man. We were all representing out there. There you go, man. You know? Hey, you got to. So. Um, so I saw somebody online, they were asking about, they were talking about how water is five bucks a bottle out there. But I believe if you bring in sealed sealed water containers, they'll allow that in the stadium, I believe, as long as you have your clear bag, Okay, I believe. So anybody yeah, going yeah, out. Yeah, 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 they do. They yeah, do. anybody going out to the games complaining about water, it's, it is hot early in the season. We'll probably cool down this week, uh, assuming we're, we're in Oakland. More about that later. Um, but, you know, bring your waters in. Stash some waters in the cooler next to your uh, your other beverages of choice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, stay hydrated. Raider you gotta Nation. stay hydrated, man. Hey, you can go hard pregame. Yeah, but you need a, you need to sneak a water in there every hey, once in a while, man. It's not a sprint; it's a marathon. There you go. You you got to make it to the end, man. I don't want to. I don't want to see people passing out in their seats. And yeah. I've seen them. Oh, I've seen them. I've Sink seen it. dude dude out by second quarter, midway through the second quarter. <laughs> That's early. Just out cold. It's early. Just snoring, man. <laughs> uh, so it was good. It, I mean, it was it was loud at times. It, it wasn't as loud as I wanted it to be. So we're calling on you, Raider Nation, to step it up this week. Pillagers, I'm, I don't have to question the pillagers. We're out there, bro. No, you don't. No, you don't. We're you don't have to there. question them. It's a special breed to be a pillager. There you go. You already know. If you're listening, just just – don't even listen to that complaint because you're not a part of the problem. <laughs> you're not part of the problem. Man. So uh, shout out to everybody out there um, representing and supporting. So we're going to get into it. It's time to break it down to the good, the bad, and the ugly. Ugh. Let's do this. So uh, let's, do it, let's start with the good. Start with the good. Okay. All right. So 
a lot of people out there saying uh, they like they like what they saw from EJ. EJ he, he wasn't half bad, um, but he wasn't good enough to win the game. And I, I'm just gonna say that. Yeah. This is a good segment, so I won't drill down right now. Yeah. But uh, I mean, he looked okay. He looked poised, you know, and, and he he created some plays. I mean, that touchdown to Crabtree that was that was cool, man. That was real that was, cool. That, that was that was a good that was a real nice play call. Um. Very creative by him to very, get out, yeah, get outside and, the pocket, get away from pressure, but it, extend it, the play. And what I and like, I, I told you, uh, I spoke to you over the over the week. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I noticed, which we had been talking about and wondering why it hadn't been happening, was the play action. It's a play action, man. So even though he had to scramble, there was a play action in there, and that helped to break that play open. Not just that, his athleticism also helped that out too. Yeah. Um. So. It was good to see that. It yeah. was good to see that. And and kind of like what we were talking about last week, I said we might have to do do some actually draw up some rollout plays. Mm-hmm. He was kind of doing that on his own. Yeah. He was kind of doing that on his own. And and when he did, it benefited us. Yeah, it did. Uh, you know, um, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in the bad, set, bad segment. But overall, for a backup quarterback to play a full game like that, I thought he looked pretty poised. Game wasn't too big for him. The moment wasn't too big for him. So, overall, not a bad performance. Um, you know, if if it's not for the for the the fumble at the beginning of the game, we're maybe we're maybe a little bit closer in the fourth quarter. Who knows how it shakes yeah. out? But but that's the way it goes. Uh, run game looked decent again. So I'm calling out people that are saying that Marshawn Lynch is done. I happen to not agree with that because in weeks one and two, when that fool was dancing on the sideline. Nobody was saying that. Right. There was not a damn word about Lynch being washed up. Right. And look, we ran into Washington and Denver, number two and number one ranked defenses respectively. And then we get back on track against Baltimore, put up another 100-plus rushing yards. We've had 100-plus rushing yards in every game except Washington and Denver. Yeah. So yeah. shut it down. Uh, those that don't like the zone running scheme, you liked it in weeks one and two, right. didn't you? Right. Okay. So silence that, squash that. No. No, Lynch did not have 100 yards by himself. It was running back by committee, and that's exactly what we wanted to see. Yeah, but he man. had 43 yards on 12 carries. That's that's almost four yards a carry. That's a first down. I mean, you know, technically speaking. Yeah, that's we'll, a first down. If you if you if you're getting four yards a carry, mm-hmm. and you're and you're running the ball three times. Yeah, it's a first down. That's nice. That's a first down. I like that. I like that. So what else? What else do we have? Um, we converted half of our first downs. That's great. We converted two the week before and zero the week prior to that. And I think yeah. we had five, five or six. What, what was the what was the 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 uh, split that we had uh, last week that we that we read? It was like two of eleven. Nah. No. No. Between the two weeks. Oh, between the two weeks, it was like two of twenty three. Yeah. So that so yeah. this was definitely an improvement. So okay. we were six of twelve. Yeah. And, and uh, Baltimore was 7 of 14, so both teams won 50%. And we have 15 first downs. So, again, not bad by a backup quarterback and, uh, you know, a team that's been struggling offensively. So, <laughs> inching back to being on track, and uh, we got Carr coming back this week. So, hopefully he can continue that momentum and push it further like Derek Carr is used to doing. Yeah. Um, what else we got in the good? Convert to half our first downs. Oh, less predictable play calling. I liked it. It was a little bit more mix and match. Yep. Uh, did not abandon the run. Stuck to that. We had high, low, mid-route looks. Uh, I, I thought the play calling was a little bit more creative. And we said this last week. We said that this was going to be the week that Todd Downing was going to be forced out yeah. of his comfort zone. And he was going to have to design a new play game, a new play calling strategy for EJ Manuel. And he did just that. Right. So let's just hope that that him being forced out of that kind of shows him, hey, don't be so stubborn. Let's mix things up. Cars yep. coming back. Let's get back to some of the old. Let's mix in some of the new. Keep it fresh. But but stick with what works at the same time. Definitely. Right? Definitely. So that was the good. That was definitely the good. Um, the bad versus Baltimore. There was certainly a lot of that. Yeah. First off, missed an open Cooper five times. Amari Cooper, according to Jack Del Rio, was open five times. I've seen two of those in uh, in playback, mm-hmm. and he certainly was open. Right. But watching EJ's helmet, he wasn't even looking. Not even looking Cooper. in that direction. So yeah. what do you what do you think, Che? Is that is that a confidence thing? Was that them simplifying the game plan, cutting the field in half? If so, 
you got to switch the half of the field, right? right? You can't stick to one half. Well, listen, man. We said it last week. We said we needed to get this guy going. We know he's our big play guy. Yes, Crab makes big plays. We have lots of guys that make big plays. But he's our big play. He's a guy who can break the game open. Yeah. And for us to go out there and not even look his way, and he got what? One, two looks? Yeah. And and the first pass that he got thrown, like the first pass that was thrown to him, wasn't even catchable. It was no chance. It wasn't even catchable. No. So, what are we doing, man? I don't know. Like, if we're really trying to get this guy out of a slump, we really want him to get out of a slump. Yeah. We're not helping him. Yeah. We're not helping him out at all. I I have a strategy for that that we'll discuss in the second half. It's okay. A, it's a bit of an analogy. Okay. That I like to apply to my life. Okay. When I'm <laughs> when I'm single. I can't wait to hear this. Man. Yeah. Can't wait to hear this. It's, it's, you know, it's a fresh outlook, I think, on okay. things. Okay. And Amari, I hope you're listening um, because I know you haven't lost faith in, faith in yourself. But Derek Carr, I hope you're listening too. And I know you're a Christian man, so you might want to cover one ear for it this. Is. But uh, <laughs> we're, we're going to get into that. Um, more bad. Defense disappeared in the fourth quarter. So I like some of the stuff that D was doing. Obviously, we got gashed. Sean Smith. You're on this list, too, and we're getting there. Uh, but in the third quarter, we were stopping the run. We had some tackles for loss. And in the fourth, when we knew we had to stop them, and we yeah. knew all they were going to do was, was try run. to kill the clock. Yeah. They didn't stop it. And we got gashed. They just, let them go. they just kept getting gain after gain after gain. It was disheartening, man. So Chase is going to come in later in the show, and hopefully he can make some sense of that. Okay. Because I know he's been drilling tape for the last two days. Yeah, yeah. The dude just locks himself in the dark room. <laughs> and uh, I like it, man. <laughs> I like it. Too. I would do it too, man. But I got a baby, man. So I, I, I can't, I can't uh, put that much attention to the game film right now. Yeah, me too. Well, that's why we got Chase in the that's film. That's why, room, hey, man. Know? He's playing. It's good work. to have Chase, man. It's good. It's good. Uh, so, so that's that. And then um, predictable offensive play calling in the second half. Uh, we did say that they, they mixed it up, but I think, um, I mean, there's kind of a philosophy that maybe you don't always run on first down because it is predictable, but you have to to keep the defense honest, and it presents you, it prevents you from getting into second and ten, which we were in the third and fourth, and I feel like every second and ten we're running the ball. Yeah. I get that you're setting up a short third down. I right. get that, and and for the most part, actually, it was working. It was working, yeah. But at the same time. If I'm calling it in section 136, <laughs> you gotta watch out. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna run the ball again. <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm sitting there, ready forever sitting there. Her son sitting there. We're all second and ten. Here comes the rush. <laughs> Boom! Rush the ball. So a little predictable. A little good and bad. I mean, the good thing is it was working for the most part. Yeah. But uh, Downing, we're looking at you. Yeah, man. Come on, man. We. Don't- you, if you if you're the new, if you're the new young offensive coordinator man the the whole thing about being young is being creative being being willing to try some different things right not being stuck in the old mm-hmm. so where is it man where is it where is it dude cuz we're waiting the knock on Musgrave was that he was too predictable week to week right it was bubble screen after bubble screen it right. was it was the land of the bubble screens right and uh, you know everyone was excited for Downing. Oh, him and Carr got a great report. They're gonna they're gonna air it out. They're gonna do this and that. They're gonna they mix it up, try new things. You know he knows all of Carr's abilities. Carr can throw every pass. Right. Apparently, I mean it wasn't Carr in there on Sunday, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And uh, here we are back in the land of predictability again. Somewhat. Yeah. Somewhat. But like we said, he he broke out of that a little bit. Keep pushing, Todd. You're on you're on the yeah, right track. Man. You're on the right track. Keep keep progressing, man. Because this. Definitely, there was definitely progress from last week to this week mm-hmm. in the play calling, um, in the create in the creativity of of the plays and, and yeah. the routes. So that's what we want to see. Yeah. Don't be so predictable. Run that play action. Get some rollouts, whatever. But don't do it when it's obvious that that's what you're gonna do. You know what I mean? So next on the list, well, I have I have three more entries on this list, uh, and they read Sean Smith, Sean Smith, and. S. Dot Smith. <laughs> so, this has kind of been an ongoing thing, and I defended this guy last year. I blamed <clears throat> Reggie Nelson for a lot of his problems, and I still do. I still do. Yeah. And, and, and credit to Reggie, he looked really good in weeks one and two, and, and now he seems to be regressing. Um, so, sorry, I got distracted there. I got, <laughs> someone sliding up in the DMs. I got oh. distracted. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, uh, okay. So, Sean Smith, Sean Smith, and S. Smith, you got burnt on the first play. I'm going to turn it over to Che here. He's going to break this play down for you a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, for the first, for the, I mean, this is the one way that you didn't want to start the game is right. exactly how we started the game. Exactly how we started the game. Exactly how we started the game. And, and I have and I have my questions about it because definitely Sean Smith, I'm not letting you off the hook. You're to blame because you're just not do you're not cutting it, dude. You're not cutting it. And I don't know what it is. And I'm gonna go ahead and 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 follow up with what Charles Woodson said earlier this week. He said, if you're brought in to be a lockdown corner, you need to be a lockdown corner. Lock it down. What's up? You were brought in to be a lockdown corner. I haven't seen it yet. No. Haven't seen it yet, man. No. So, you're not off the hook, dude. But we do know one thing. Okay. And that's that Sean Smith is not the fastest guy on the field. Oh, yeah. Okay? We know that he's a big physical corner, Mm -hmm. but he definitely doesn't doesn't have the speed to keep up with these fast dudes all by himself. And for more on that, go go to PJ4F.com. You'll see the article, All Eyes on Smith. We kind of break it down there who he is and yeah. what he's expected to do yeah. and what's been happening. Yeah. And there's, you know, I'd talk a little bit about his evaluation before or his valuation be- as he was hitting free agency. Check that out. Yeah. Get a little bit of context here. You, most of y'all probably already know. Yeah. Check it out anyway. Check it out. Check, check it out. <laughs> uh, but, so, but anyways, on this play, man, okay. the play that we, that we all sat there on Sunday and were like, really? Really? Mm hmm. This is how we start the game? I know you were in the stands saying, really? I was shaking my head. Really? Yeah. I was like, oh, man, I would have been. I couldn't yell because I had a baby in my hands. Yeah, we, it was collective dejected. But, yeah, I was just. And, and, I, and I heard it on the TV. The crowd just went like. Oh, yes. uh, you could feel it sack. You could feel it sack. So what yeah, man. What so happened this, on that play? So this is what, this is what I saw, okay? Mm-hmm. I, I didn't get to, to break down too much film, but this is a play that I did get to break down a little bit. Okay. So this is what I saw. I saw Baltimore, first of all, let's break down what Baltimore came out in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Baltimore came out single back. They had two whites split out to opposite ends. They had double tight end on the right side. Okay. So they had one tight end on the line. They had one off of it, off, off the line a little bit. Right. Then we had a play action, five step drop back. Mm-hmm. Okay. This, this is what they did. We came out. And everybody was in the box. Okay? Mm-hmm. Loaded up. Looking for Loaded run. up. We had both our safeties in the box. Okay? When Flacco goes to actually hike the ball, mm-hmm. we have Nelson suddenly drop back. So we ended up with a single safety in the middle of the field. Our two corners are manned up, bump and run. Mm-hmm. And KJ is still in the box. The ball is hiked. The running back gets the play action, releases over the middle, stops about a yard and a half, two yards behind the Mm D-line. Okay? The inside tight end releases up the middle, does a curl route 10 yards up. Mm -hmm. And then you got the two receivers, what seemed like to me, both of them going go routes. Go route. Okay? We had uh, Wallace releasing outside, and you had Macklin releasing inside. Mm -hmm. Okay? Our bump and run corners. Did they bump and run? No jam. No jam, man. Low carb diet. No jam. No, no jam. Jelly. They had no jam. Okay. <laughs> they both got free releases. Mm. They got to go wherever they wanted. Okay. KJ is in the box and I am presumably guarding the second tight end man to man. The the second tight end blocks down. Mm-hmm. He helps the line. He blocks down on the line. KJ doesn't leave his spot Just from where. From where he came down into the box, he stayed in that same position. At that point, he should he should either be reading blitz or help. Exactly. Drop back or blitz. Okay. Our two linebackers drop back into pass coverage into a zone right over the middle. Middle zone. Both in the middle. Mm-hmm. And then you had Bruce Irvin, for whatever reason, get sent into the flats that nobody released into. Nobody's there. Nobody went so, into the flats. So they had a, they had dialed up a run defense. Yeah, yeah, they dialed up. I I don't know what they were. I don't know what they were expecting. Yeah, but to me, it's like you were caught 
in the worst possible position. So now you have Nelson, the single safety up high, Mm -hmm. in the middle of the field, having to help on two go routes. Yeah, he drops straight back immediately from the snap. And if Macklin gets an inside release, then he has to stay. He has to stay honest, mm-hmm. right? He can't just go immediately to go help out right. Smith, right? So I'm I'm torn by it because I feel like they still got to make the play. I feel like Nelson, you still should have got your ass over there, mm-hmm. and Smith, you should have got a jam on the dude. So you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't be like behind immediately off the line, right? Um, but that's what I saw in that play, and and we made Flacco look like like a Hall of Famer, man. Like yeah. it, it was disgusting. He looked like Super Bowl Flacco. There's a guy. There's a guy. <laughs> this is a guy that came into the week with four touchdowns and six picks. He's throwing a pick in every single game. Yeah, we got none. Did we get one? We got none. We no. still have none. We're we are we are one out of three teams in the NFL with no interceptions. Exactly, right Exactly, man. So I, I I don't know that, but there's just just watching that play. It I was just kind of at a loss as to what our defensive coordinator is drawing up or what he saw or what's he what he's seen in that when when Baltimore comes out with that with that package. Yeah. Um but it wasn't that. Yeah. And then after the bomb, they proceed to run the ball four times. And did we stop a single run? Nope. No. 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 So Yeah, man, that was ugly. That was ugly and I don't know who who's to blame, but definitely Nelson you're not off the you're not off the off the hook and Smith you're definitely not off the hook definitely man. not off the hook so I was pretty hard on Reggie Nelson last year I was I was getting encouraged by the first two weeks he was in on a lot of tackles and even helping out quite a bit in the run game and now here he is he's regressed my big problem there is you got the two slowest guys in coverage on the same side of the field exactly man so. and 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 the and and we saw I was telling you this right before we started the show yeah we saw that when the touchdown came in because they ran a reverse with mm-hmm. the receiver. They mm-hmm. went out there in goal line package mm-hmm. and they motioned the receiver. He was on the right side, motioned over the middle. As soon as he got the ball, he was gone. Nelson had a man to man was nowhere in sight. Got mixed up in the linebackers coming across the motion. Nowhere in sight. Nowhere man. in sight. Trailed. So there's, that, there's your, there's your proof that he's not, that we, we got the two slowest guys on the same side of the field. Something's got to change, man. I don't get it. Something's got to change. I don't get it. We'll 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 break that down a little bit more when we get into the keys against San Diego because that's going to be obviously a big factor. Uh, so who are you going to throw in the trash this week? Who's our who's our trash can player this week? Oh uh, man, I, I I I was torn because I, I, like I mentioned to you, I think uh, Cook deserves a nomination. Yeah. For the multiple drop passes I'm, over the last few let's, weeks, let's throw Cook in the recycle bin for, yeah, for right yeah, now. Yeah. Because he did have the drops last week, he did have the fumble that led to a touchdown, which put yeah. us back, put us down fourteen but points was, right off the bat. But he was also he was also uh, what, what did he have on the day? Because he was a little bit of a of a safety valve. I feel like um, receiving, he only had about thirty five yards. Uh, yeah, less than that actually. So three catches for twenty five yards. There you go. Yeah, his longest catch was seventeen yards. So, but that's not the he had opportunities to do something. So more than that. So as long, yeah, as long as catch was for 17 yards out of 25, so that only leaves eight on two other receptions. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's pretty boo boo. And he definitely had more looks mm-hmm. than just those three catches. So you're chilling right now in the recycle bin. You're awfully close. I feel like Sean Smith comes in this week. He saves you. Wallace targeted three times, netting 133 yards. Three go routes, man. Three go routes. Uh, one of them was kind of a, a I, I want to call it a deep dig because he's coming across. But yeah, I mean, deep, deep routes, deep routes, and Flacco's got a perfect quarterback rating throwing your way, Sean Smith. Yeah, boo boo. Three catches, one hundred and thirty something yards. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. So we're backing up the truck this week, Sean Smith. Climb in, Reggie Nelson. You just sit on the curb because we're coming back around. Yeah. Next Sunday, garbage day. Pick you up <laughs> unless you're not there anymore. So you just chill in the little bin. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that's like. It's like when you forget to take out the trash bin, you miss it, and you have to, oh, man, you guys hold on to that trash for a while. I don't know if you saw it, but my <laughs> trash is still on the curb right now. Those cans are empty, though, but this Reggie Nelson is one of them. Yeah, right However, now we're, we're holding on to it, man. 
So uh, MVP this game. It's a tough to pick out because I don't feel like anyone was a breakout player in this game. There was no nobody really flashed for me. Yeah. My guy, and I, I've been going to him a lot, and it shows because overall he's ranked third best safety in the league right now, is is Carl Joseph. He was tied for most tackles on the team this week with six. He mm-hmm. was up there with uh, with Khalil Mack and I believe Markel Lee all had six tackles. No, sorry, Kerry, uh, Joseph, and Mack. Lee had five tackles. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, you know what? K, Ma- KJ is doing what we expected from him. S- six tackles, three assists. He show he shows up in the run game. Mm-hmm. He's he's all over the field. They're bringing him in. They're bringing him into the box. They're blitzing him. They're doing all that good stuff. So I like what I see. Yeah, he, is he gonna get? Is he gonna get beat? Yes, he's gonna get beat every once in a while. Sure, because when you're doing so much, yeah, it's it's bound to happen. Yeah. So there's definitely gonna be some plays where you're like, oh, KJ, what were you doing? But I think overall. Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't disagree with that. It, it's one of those things where it's when you see Smith getting beat, it's like, damn, he got burnt again. You see Joseph get beat, he's like, oh, well, he just got burnt on that play. It, it happens. You know, it happens. Players the, get behind you. Exactly. But the other thing, too, Mac is still the highest rated end. The highest rated end in the league. In the league. So, um, I don't know, Carl Joseph, Khalil Mack. You the real MVP. Yeah. Hey, you're right there. About all we got, too. <laughs> about all we got. It's about all we got. So uh, that's our trash can player. That's our MVP player. That's the first segment. Yeah. You got anything you want to add before we get up out of here? Man. Oh, I just want to throw throw in the fact that uh, I'm boycotting beers this week. Oh, there you go. Because I'm tired of having to stop drinking really good beers because Raiders can't get their ish together. We're drinking boo-boo cooking wine. Yeah. Right yeah. now. Yeah, boo-boo wine. That's what we're drinking that's, right that's now. That's what you brought real. me to. <laughs> yeah. That's how, that's how how afraid I am to have to let go of another tasty beer. You so. know what it is? We just had to, we had to stoop to the level. Yeah, we had to stoop to their level. So hopefully they start bringing their level back up, man. That's it, cause uh, so I'm, I can break out some good stuff. Some tasty. Yeah, something real good. Some real tasty. Oh, you know what I saw? Mm. I saw Belgian Beaver uh, was promoting mm-hmm. uh, PB and J. Oh dang. Yeah, a PB and J ale, man. I, I don't know. I. I Get out of here. I got to ch- I gotta check it out. That sounds too I gotta good. I got to find it. That sounds too good. All right, y'all. Well, we're going to get up out of here. I- I'm not sure how many callers we have right now. I think we may only have one. It's a slow week. Look, the fire is dying slowly in Raider Nation. I see you guys. Um, I'm-, I'm-, I'm pleading with you to stay positive, but but I get it. We can't blame you completely. Yeah. But let's hear from our, our one caller, our brief message. And then we'll, we'll check you guys out on the other side. I'm going to go down the hall and knock on the film room door, see if Chase is ready to come out and uh, help us make sense of all this madness. And maybe yes, give please. Us, give please. Us, give us a little little light, a little hope headed into uh, where are we at? Week six now. Yes. So, uh, all right, y'all. We'll, we'll see you on the other side. We out here. Go Raiders. Peace. going on, Kenny? This is Gent out here in Kansas City. Bro, it's been a rough couple of weeks. I'm really tired of hearing Chief fans talk crazy about how they're no longer worried about the Raiders. The beginning of the season is that the Raiders are coming, the Raiders are coming. Now it's <laughs> the Raiders are coming. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, the chieftains eat them words, but at the same time, we got to come with a little more creativity on offense than we've been coming with. We dig a little deeper on defense to make that happen. Your boy, Jen, it's my opinion. Go. Alden Smith will emerge from the plumes of smoke and lead this team to 10 sacks. This is the San Diego. I guess I mean LA Chargers. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And we're back. We're back. Back in business here. Uh, just just peeked into the film room, and uh, Chase has been in there for 48 straight hours. Um, <laughs> it's very dark in there. It's very hazy. Um, he doesn't even smoke, so I don't know really what's going on. I think we might have to um, upgrade our equipment. But uh, without further ado, it, it's uh, Chase on tape. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, guys? How you doing, Chase? How you doing look- good. Well, I'd be, I'd be doing better if we if we got a W last week. Exactly, but, man. Uh, Wouldn't we all? 
Man, it's it's been. Um, is it just me or have these last three weeks been like a uh, a flash from the past to you guys? Yeah, not a good one. <laughs> it feels like the 2010 yeah. Raiders all over again, but it's all it's also been really weird. It's been strange. Yeah. yeah. It, right. it has been. It has been. There, there's something going on. And um, I tell you, fumbling the ball on, on the, uh, yeah. you know, right out of the bat isn't going to help when they're returning it for a touchdown. Yeah. Either, so. Getting down 14 points. We're, right we're off digging the bat. ourselves in a hole early. Major setback. So yeah. uh, shed some oh, light. Yeah. Shed some light on on this last game. Give us some of the some of the positive stuff that you saw that was working for us. Some of the things that were different, and then uh, maybe maybe a little bit of, of what we still need to shed um, to to move forward here. Yeah. Well, um, you know, really, it was it was pretty interesting to me because I, I was feeling really down after the game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I on my Bart ride home, I was feeling like, man, we look we look terrible today. What's what's going on with us? What's going on? Mm-hmm. And I sit down, I watch the film, I chart out the plays, and it's strange. The offense on film didn't look bad. It, it really didn't look bad. Our, our running game was going really strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that we did, um, one thing that we did this last week, is we brought in a lot more power running concepts. You know, we we were pulling guards, we were pulling centers and tackles. Mm-hmm. We got a little creative with the way we were pulling. Not just zone. And, Not just zone yeah, all game. Not just zone. And I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Early on in the game, there was um, there was a little stretch where we were we were running zone, mm-hmm. and uh, Baltimore started figuring it out. They started getting a good push in the uh, in the in the direction we were trying to get that zone going, mm-hmm. and we adjusted. We started going to the power game, and and it worked well. And we we don't have the most athletic offensive linemen, right? But it is a it is a thing of beauty when you see Osemele. Lay the wood on someone oh, yeah. going from that left side. That's a beautiful oh, yeah. thing. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, what, um, what else we were doing? What, what do you do in a run game with, with an over aggressive defense? What's the number one play that you go to that, that you said that we saw? You, you see you see a defense getting a great push to one side of the line. What do you do to them in that in that situation? That's when you bring in the counter. Exactly. That, that's when you start running the counter runs. And, and we, we brought that back a few times this week. That, that was kind of a staple of our running game last year. Mm-hmm. It was. Um, it was. The misdirection. Yeah. And, and we got it going this week. There was one play. Um, I, it might have been in the second half. But there was one play where, um, man, Lee Smith, what, I think one of the most underrated offensive players on the team. Yeah. Right. Lee Smith on a counter run to the left comes over and just – just lays out the edge defender and, and it set up a nice little play there. Lee Smith and is gritty. He's gritty. That's what I like to see, man. That that's what we got to get back to. We got to get back to punching punching teams in the mouth. That's yeah. something that's been happening to us these last few weeks. Exactly. And you got a guy like Jalen Richard that can really hurt you in misdirection. I mean, that guy's yeah. that guy's a he, he he's he's a shifty dude. Yeah, man. Real shifty dude. <laughs> Real shifty. <laughs> so in terms of the passing game, what were some of the highlights that you saw uh, EJ Manuel out there? We said last week all three of us were saying that Todd Downing was going to have to adjust and force him to be creative and get outside his comfort zone and mix in something different. you got a different type of quarterback, which is going to make you do that. And you've been doing the same thing for the last you know three to four weeks, arguably. So what, what did you see where – I mean, we, we, we had a better game passing. The yardage wasn't quite there, but we were 50% on third down. So what 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 got us there? What kind of adjustments were you seeing? Well, I, I got to tell you, I, I think Todd Downing made some made some creative uh, creative decisions. He, he he really stepped it up. I think this last week. Mm-hmm. And before I even get into the passing game, I I, I think you have to start again with the uh, the read option, which we saw a bit of this week. Yeah, that was cool. So yeah, so sticking with it, and that, again, that's a great way to counter an over aggressive defense. Right, there you go and we. We saw that uh, work out in the second half. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I, I think you have to give Todd Downing props for that. Um, there were a couple plays in the first half where uh, it, it looked, you know, it looked like it could have been an option run, mm-hmm. but Manuel wasn't even really looking down the edge defender. So, I, I, I think it was just sort of trying to set up the feel that it could be an option to hold that edge defender. Gotcha. When really it was just going to be a run up the middle. Okay. And then look what the Raiders did. They adjusted. They actually adjusted and and ran the option. They had manual keep it once in the second. Yeah. So so I, I like seeing adjustments and um, going to the passing game. Man, we we got. I I, I don't want to say I, I called it. I don't want to say Todd Downing <laughs> listened to me. 
But um, hey, you know he's week, tuned in to the pillaging oh, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, of course, he's the number one fan. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, we we really went back to um, the staple of our offense last year. You know, we we were sending inside receivers deep, taking taking those safeties off our outside receivers, mm-hmm. and we we had one on one matchups all day on the outside. Now we didn't necessarily hit them every time. Right. Right. It, it's been kind of a story this week that. You know, Cooper was open, you know, five, whatever Jack Del Rio said. He had five five times. times He was wide open. And he was, you know, there were a lot of instances where he he was wide open. Mm -hmm. And Manuel didn't get him the ball. You know, you you could argue if that's on Manuel or not. I I think Manuel played fine. I think he he was safe with the ball. He was smart with the ball. And he was pretty good at getting rid of the ball quickly. Yeah. But um, we, we did a great job getting those safeties off our receivers, getting the ball downfield. We brought in a lot, a lot of vertical concepts this week, and you know, uh, you guys joked about playing Madden last yeah. week. Yeah, right? you, you were saying four verts, right? On, on fourth and one, is that, is that what we're gonna do? Well, you know, four verticals is a really cool play because um, it doesn't even have to be literally four vertical routes. Right. You know, on, on four verts, receivers have the option to to hook it back depending on the coverage. Sure. Right. And. So in the second half in particular, when we were really playing from behind and had to get it going, we had a lot of vertical vertical concepts going where um, we were able to try and press the ball downfield. And man, if only we had Carr. If we had Derek Carr, oh. I really feel like we would have been able to make more happen in the passing game. Yeah, yeah I, I do too. I had the same feeling when I was sitting there watching yeah. it. I was like, oh, Carr was here. He could push it down there. And the other thing that we had going for us, and, and you had mentioned this, was the return of the play-action passing game. Yes. Yes. I mean, what we we saw a touchdown off of it. We right? saw a exactly. touchdown. We did, and, yeah. we, and we almost saw a second touchdown. And the, the overthrow, yeah. I believe, was also a play action pass. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And we we could have had two different receivers score a touchdown on that second one. That's it. Yep. So I think going yep. into this, we had seven play action passes total on the season, and then this weekend we don't have an exact number, but you had it at six. I had it at somewhere between five and eight. So we equal our season total in play action passes on this one Sunday. So fingers crossed that that returns again. Correct? Right. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and I, I think the biggest thing to really take away from this game is is we adjusted. We changed things up. Right. We're we're complaining there's no play action. We get play action. There it we is. We complain there's no creativity. We get we get some some zone action going. You know, we also had one play, and man, I, I hope we come back to it at some point. We had one play where we we tried to uh, set it up like we're faking a halfback screen to the left, and mm-hmm. we were setting up a tight end screen to the right, and it, it really could have gone for a big play, man. It, it's cool. I, I haven't seen anything from us like that this year. That's cool. And of course, it, it all fell apart. It didn't work out. <laughs> but uh, but hey, we're we're getting creative. We're trying to make things happen. We're adjusting and we're starting to play to our strengths. So that's that's all we could ask for. So I had a question I had a question for you, and you kind of touched on this and, and I touched on it in the first segment. Um EJ Manuel, Amari Cooper getting wide open, watching him closely during the game, I didn't see his helmet rotating to that side of the field much at all. What's your opinion on that? Was that a confidence issue? Was that just EJ Manuel, backup quarterback, not being able to go through all of his reads? Or do you think the coaching staff cuts the field in half to make the game simpler for him? Um, what, what, what did you do? You, can you tease anything out of that? What's your gut feeling there? Yeah, um, we you know it, it's tough to know for sure, but you're mm-hmm. you're totally right uh, on a lot of those plays. Um, you know, Amari could add a, a huge touchdown. He could add huge plays all over the place, and yeah. and he wasn't even looking. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of people are on Manuel. I actually was arguing with a coworker earlier this week, you know, who was saying, "Oh, Manuel's trash. He can't find the open receiver." <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, I mean, yeah, I I see what you're saying, but I'm sure the coaching staff was stressing getting rid of the football. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, I, and, and that's totally fine. He's, he's the number two quarterback. I mean, I don't know how much we could, we could expect from him. Right. It'd be great. It'd be great if he could go through all these different reads, mm-hmm. but you know what, when, when Coop is alone on one side like that, typically those back right, backside receivers, if they're not the first option, they're the last option when it comes to the reads, Right. you know, right. Cause you, cause you, you, you have to work your way over there. You have to get through the other route concepts going on on the left side. Cause when Coop's alone on the right side, that means you got trips or, you know, you have three pass catch- catching options on the left side uh-huh. and you got to read through that and make, make that first decision first. So I, I have no, I, 
I don't really have an issue with it either. I, I, I think what we needed for Manuel was to play smart, play safe. Mm-hmm. He didn't have to try and do too much. I and mean, unfortunately, we needed the defense to keep us in this game, and that didn't happen. Right. And what we were talking about with the route concepts here, guys, is that if when you're making your reads, you have a primary wide receiver. Generally, you have another route concept that's going to integrate with his so that if that isn't open, you got a really quick read either underneath or over the top. You're basically watching the safety or you're watching the linebacker, and those two routes are tied together. After that, now you're scanning the other side of the field or you're looking dump off into the flat. And that could either be the tight end or that could be the halfback or the fullback. And so like you're saying, if the backside wide receiver isn't number one, he's number four because you're scanning all the way through. Uh, I talked about timing routes and how teams have been sitting on timing routes. Literally almost every route in the NFL is a timing route. Everything is timed down to the footstep, down to the second. We're really talking about quick timing routes. One, two, three, release. One, two, three, release. Um... But that being said, it takes it takes a while to get through there, and if you're not getting to that that fourth that fourth option on the play, at this point, I mean, even though the offense line's ranked pretty high, the the thought of getting to the fourth when when you are still giving up sacks, it's a dicey situation, right? Yeah. You, your back's turned. Um, you want to get rid of that football. You don't want to hang out in the pocket too long, and, and that's a concern. Like you said, the coaching staff probably preaching get rid of the football. That's exactly what he needs to do, and that's what he did. I mean, the numbers weren't stellar, but what what did he have? Um, one interception on the day? Did he have any picks on the day? No, no picks, right? I don't think he had any. No picks. No, no picks. picks. Yeah, no picks. No. no so, the, only, the only turnover was the fumble, right? That was it. Yeah. yeah. That was it. And and the fumble, I mean, major setback. You call it bad luck, call it bad technique. He had the ball way out there. I hate seeing that. Yeah, he had it. He had is one of the things that I I hate to see from receivers in general was when they catch the ball, they like to carry it in their hand, right? Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't tuck it, they don't put it away. Mm -hmm. And that's what he had. And then he decided, oh, wait, I want to put it away. And by then, the the linebacker had already closed that that distance man slapped it out of his arm i liked rathman rathman always had like a three-point technique on the ball uh one corner in the elbow the other one underneath the fingers with a hand on top yeah hand on top man so you know i mean i mean that's not feasible in the open field but tuck that ball (laughs) get it in man tuck that ball uh so um yeah I, i anything that you saw from the defense my biggest thing well actually before we move off of the offense um predictability in the game so Todd Downey he did mix and match he did take change some things up but it wasn't all gravy in a sense what were some of the things that you saw that were predictable or, or at least one thing that jumped out to you that that was maybe a little bit too predictable yeah yeah this, this is still something that I don't know if it's cockiness I don't, I don't know if it's if, if, if it's if it's this attitude like you know, oh, I, I don't care if they know what we're doing. We're, you know, we're going to run it down their throats or, you know, or whatever it is that you hear from football coaches every now and then. Yeah. yeah. Um, but man, on, on second down, we, we just want to run the football. That, that, it seems like that's, that's just what, what Todd Downing wants to do on second down. Right. And, and in the first half, we had eight second down calls and seven, seven out of eight of them were, were runs. Wow. Um, after week one I, on my uh, YouTube channel, I, I highlighted one of our formations that I call the tight bunch. Okay. Where you get this, you know, this triangle, triangle of um, pass catchers tight on the line. Right. Uh, throughout throughout the game, we ran ten tight bunch formations. Ninety percent of those formations again were runs. Mm. And so when when defenses see these sort of numbers, then you know safeties could creep up. Um, you know, it, 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 the whole defense can adjust. Linebackers are creeping up, and, and obviously they know what our running tendencies are. They know what to look for. Mm-hmm. It just gives defenses a, a little bit of an edge. Even if it's just half a step, they're getting a little bit of an edge on us in certain situations. And that's all it takes in the NFL is half a step. Yep. Uh, the, the, the tight bunch yep. he's talking about is it's basically like a trips right, but no, no wide receivers are white out. Everyone's tucked in close to the tight end, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I'd like to see that go outside at least once. Pitch that ball outside those wide receivers. Do something. Um stop running it yeah. right off tackle every single time. Uh anything that that jumped out on the defense. My biggest thing and we talked about this already was, you know, in the fourth quarter, we're playing from behind, but we're in a position we're at home. We got a little bit of hope. All we got to do is stop the run cuz you know the run's coming. And the run came and it came and it came, and it just kept on coming, and we couldn't stop nothing. 
Was there yeah. anything that you saw yeah. there that was a breakdown, or was or was it just us being tired? Was it the defense being on the field for too long? Was it schematic, or was it just pure physicality? Honestly, I, I think it's lack of experience. I, I mean, yeah. you know, Corey Corey James is beat up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Mark Will, Mark L. Lee got beat up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and look at who, the interior of our defensive line. You know, yeah. aside from Justin Ellis, it's all it's all new guys. Yeah, you know, who, who, are, yeah. who aren't used to to shutting down the trenches yet. Who, yeah. who aren't used to clogging up the middle. And honestly, Justin Ellis is the only true big body who who can just fill up space uh-huh. you know the the other guys Trayvon Hester he's still getting pushed around you know and, and he needs to get better at, at anchoring himself mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. against double teams right yeah. um right Eddie Vanderdose same sort of thing you know he shows flashes but he still gets pushed around a bit he, he's still not fully adjusted to the NFL skill level that you know these 330 pound men pushing you around yeah. it, it takes a little getting used to so I, I think injuries and just lack of experience are, are really starting to cost this defense. Missing Dan Williams a little bit there, but not on every play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not on every play, but a little bit there in the run game. You know, I, I have a question for you guys. Yes. I have a question for you guys because it, it's, it's, um, it, it's been a pretty common complaint that, uh, you know, Ken Norton, he doesn't blitz. Why aren't we blitzing? We got to do more blitzes. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I understand that, but at the same time, we have you know Dexter McDonald on the field, you know, with our right. with our beat up secondary. Yeah. Do do you guys feel like we should be blitzing more, or do you feel like we need to be sitting back and keeping everything in front of us, which Sean Smith can't do, obviously. Yeah. But well, look in, know, in weeks one yeah. and two, the blitz served us very well. And then we come out against Washington and run the same blitz package against them. And I think I'd even seen it twice in a row in that game. And a good quarterback's going to throw straight into that blitz. Joe Flacco's really good at it. He can recognize a blitz. You throw straight into it right over the top. And just kind of like what you're saying, when you got a banged up secondary or even a, a secondary filled with players that are slow, like Reggie Nelson and Sean Smith, you can't over blitz and just hang them out to dry. Right? The blitz game in the NFL is a very delicate dance. Um, you have to be unpredictable, but at the same time, you're forced into positions when you have to blitz where it has to be predictable. And now it comes down to every player executing perfectly at their position or else you're a liability that's about to get exposed. Most. And I think right now, especially I'm looking at the injury report right now on our screen, there's a lot of liabilities back there. Yep. And I'm thinking that's probably what they were doing on Sunday is try to just hang as many bodies back as possible and just cover up those weaknesses. What say you, Che? I, uh, mean, I, I, I completely agree with that. Um, yeah, man, what are you going to do when you have a bunch of backups or you have a bunch of guys that ain't your main guys out there on the field? Mm-hmm. You're going to put them in in situations where they're all on their own to try to make a play because right. that's not going to work out most of the times. And, and I, I said it before and a few weeks ago that the NFL is a long game, meaning that you, you run plays this week to set up plays you know, two weeks from now. So we go blitz heavy in the first quarter of the season. We pull back this week. Obviously, injury, I think, I think like I said, personnel is a big part of that. But who knows? Uh, maybe they saw something in Baltimore Ravens personnel where they feel like a blitz-heavy attack this week just isn't going to work for us. We're going to get smoked if we go that route. So let's see because we're going into – I keep wanting to say San Diego, but we're going up against the Chargers this week, and that's a quarterback right there that crumbles under pressure. You start getting to Phillip Rivers, you hit him a couple times, don't even sack him, just smack him in the face a few times. Things start to break down. So I do expect the return of the blitz this week, um, but but again, like you said, you can't over blitz in the NFL either. It's a very delicate balance. Yeah, no, definitely. I, well, yeah. An- an- another thing too, and and I found this, I found this interesting. They made this comment on, actually as the, as the telecast was was on. They said that Joe Flacco felt like it was easier to read our defense when Khalil was in because he knew what to expect from Khalil off that end, mm. knowing that he's not really ever going to drop into coverage; that he's right. always coming. Right. right. Um, so it, it made him it made him already predict what's going to happen on this side of the of, of the defense. Gotcha. Um, that was that was pretty interesting outlook. Like when when they said that, I was like, whoa. Yeah, and speaking of Khalil Mack, um, 
his play on Sunday, well, I don't say his play, but his involvement. I saw him, there were several series that he sat out almost completely, and then he was often out on first down. And then I was noticing too early in the game, Bruce Irvin, he looked a little bit woozy on the sideline. It was really hot in there, so I, I don't want to make excuses for these guys because it's, I mean, you got players in Jacksonville where the humidity is like 115%. Right. But I, I'm kind of wondering if the heat was a factor on that too. And, you know, you got your best defensive uh, down lineman right there and he's sitting on the sideline. That's that's not doing us any favors. Yeah, you know, that's a that's a very interesting statement on on Khalil Mack. That's, that's really interesting. Um and, you know, I noticed the same thing about Irvin. I, I've actually noticed that a couple games this year where it seems like Irvin just misses a couple stretches of the game. And mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm curious about that. Um, as far as Mack and Irvin sitting out, I, I wonder if the attitude is we're losing so many defensive starters, mm. you know, if, if Mack or Irvin were to go down. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not only is that a big hit, but then who's our backup edge defender behind that? Kowser? Who can spell? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then let's say let's say Irvin goes out and Kowser's starting. Right. Who who the hell is going to back up and spell Mack and Kowser then? There's yeah, no exactly. one else. Exactly. There's no one. Yeah, it's true. So so I think I, I think there's a bit of trying to play it safe with our with our stars right now. Mm-hmm. And, and probably also saving them for the end of the game when we'll yeah. really need them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Um, anything else you want to add before uh, before we, we say say goodbye, Chase? <laughs> you know, uh, we, we, we've we focused a lot on predictability with the offense. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, and, and everything you guys said I agree with as far as blitzing. You know, I, I think it's a it's a good point. You you can't be predictable. If offenses know what blitzes you're gonna run, mm-hmm. then they're gonna tear you apart. Yep. Yeah. But I think one thing that we could do is is get a little more creative maybe with 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 our blitzes. Or or even if we're not gonna blitz, you know, there was I, I think the second sack that Baltimore had against us mm-hmm. was it it was pretty brilliant. Um, scheming by the defense. You know, they they had six defenders on on the uh, on the line. You know, they were showing a double A gap blitz, mm-hmm. and then they only rushed four, right. and and the offensive line didn't know how to adjust, and it left Penn in this situation where he's got two different edge defenders. He's got to try and decide who he's going to block. Right. So we make a lot about the offense keeping defenses honest. Well, defenses can keep offenses offenses honest too. And uh, I I know what you're saying. I don't really see us showing blitz and not blitzing a lot. I don't see fake blitz a lot. Yeah. I feel like when you see the blitz lining up, the blitz is coming. Yeah. I don't see a lot of uh, creeping in the line and then pulling back. And the other thing that we've also touched on before in previous weeks is when we do bring the blitz it always seems like we're tipping our hat too early man like way too early don't don't give don't like make it obvious that you're coming yeah. because it seems like the quarterback's barely setting up underneath the, the center and they're already already they're already forward. doing that yeah 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 we gotta we gotta do a little better job of not showing our hand early in the snap count absolutely i agree with that 100 percent um so uh, what are you looking forward to uh quick hit i'm all quick hit so looking forward to LA next next week. What's what's something that that you think that we can carry over from last week, or maybe something new? We got Derek Carr coming back in the fold. Um, give me uh, give me your key to the game on Sunday. Well, I, I think the key to the game is winning the turnover battle. Mm-hmm. I, I I really think that's what it comes down to. We have we have to protect the ball, and we have to find a way to take away the ball with our you know with our defense. We have to force. We have to finally figure out a way to intercept the ball. Get our first pick and, of the season. And, yeah, exactly. Exactly. We, we, we've got to have some sort of difference making plays on defense. Um, I think the most interesting thing going into this game offensively is how, how are we going to pass the football? Because my biggest issue with the first couple weeks is we were really predictable and, and quick with our quick with our passes, all sort of all sort of short and watered down passing concepts. And I like that we opened it up a little more this week. But are we going to want to protect Carr? I mean, Carr has a, a broken bone in his back. So, yeah, yeah. you know, are, are we are we going to want him to get rid of the ball after, you know, is it going to be three-step drops all day? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and a lot, of, a lot of people don't realize this, but on a three-step drop, 
the uh, the the first receiver is supposed to be getting the ball on his sixth step, you know. So that's it's supposed to be a quick right away play, like you've been saying. Yeah. And you know, our, how how are we gonna how are we gonna play? Um, how are we gonna play their defense? Are are we going to be aggressive? Are we gonna protect Carr? Are we gonna keep uh, a tight end in the block, which we haven't done as much of this year? You know, we we've kind of just had five linemen back there blocking and sending everyone out on these passing routes Mm -hmm. are we going to bring in an extra offensive tackle to protect Carr, or or are we even concerned about protecting Carr? do we feel like he's ready to handle the the full load i I really want to see how our offense uh plays it this week it's going to be interesting and and dare i say um pardon me we we got uh we got harley davidson's out front right now (laughs) uh dare i dare i say that that Derek carr's return and and kind of the severity of the unknown severity of his injury might maybe be playing into our favor a little bit this week. Uh, Cause you got the chargers who's probably wondering the same things that you are. So it'll be interesting to see um, what his mobility is and, and how much this is hampering. I mean, is he stiff? Is he limber? How much pain is actually there? I mean, he looks good at the podium, right? <laughs> but uh, I mean, maybe a little bit of mystery is on our side this week. And you know what? Another thing I'm uh, I guess the question is, does does Jack have him on a short leash? Mm. Is yeah. this is this yeah. a game that you that you get him out right away if you think if you don't see what you like? Yeah, yeah. Then it gets real. Yeah. Then it gets real dicey, right? Then yeah. now now you got a quarterback controversy. Not right. really, but you know how the fan base is going to react. Right, right. So I, I I mean personally, I don't think he does. Right, I think I he's think been so. wanting to get the ball back in his hands. Yeah, since he got injured. Yeah, but. It's definitely something to think about. We we you know with with Reggie McKenzie, Jack Del Rio, we we've been pretty conservative with injuries. I, I feel pretty confident that if Carr's playing, they're they're not going to try and hold him back too much, mm-hmm. right? You know, if if anything, they're going to have to find a way to protect him a little extra. Yeah. But I don't think they'd put him out there if they thought that that he you know it was that risky of a decision. I, I'm yeah. so I'm not sure how how short a leash he'll have. Um, but it's really going to be interesting to see. It's, it's going to be an interesting game this week. Yeah. Uh, you you brought up a you just said a, a real key word to me that just kind of made me think of something. You you brought up the the word conservative. Do you feel like Jack's been a little too conservative this season? Well, it, it certainly doesn't feel like last year, does it? Right. Right. Uh, last last, yeah. last year we had Black Jack Del Rio, you know, just letting it ride, throwing throwing the throwing. He's like, I'll, I'll put it all on black. And this year, yeah. it feels like he's he's uh he's shying away from it quite a bit, man. Like yeah, yeah. I mean, that's you're you're right on. That's exactly right. I I, I wonder about that. I, I wonder, um, you know, I mean, at, at a certain point, you know, luck plays into it. Um, you know, maybe he he didn't feel like riding. You know, taking he he obviously doesn't want to take as many risks this year. Yeah. You know, fourth and three. Let's punt it and trust our our beat up defense. <sighs> Um, yeah. Honestly, that sounds more risky than going for it. Yeah, that was a, a lot more risky than, than going for it. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. So then so, maybe maybe he still is. <laughs> he still is taking risks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, same thing, actually, huh? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, as always, Chase, we want to thank you for joining us this week, and uh, we look forward to to your return next week, and um, look forward to your video every week. Um, to check him out, uh, search Unsung Raiders. Is that correct? Unsung. Yes, sir. Yeah. Unsung Raiders on YouTube, and I believe you're you're signed up on Twitter now as well. So make sure you give this guy a follow. Um, check out his breakdowns. He knows what he's talking about, and um, he's going to help keep you sane through one of the craziest seasons we yes, had. Yes, please keep us sane, man. Keep us sane. And yeah, if- man. Every every Friday or Saturday, look for a video on YouTube. Um, Unsung Raiders is is the uh, the Twitter handle on YouTube. You could search Oakland Raiders Unsung Heroes. You'll find the videos. Um, yeah, yeah, every week. Let's do it. Cool, man. We really appreciate you coming on, and uh, go Raiders. Yeah, hey, I appreciate I appreciate you guys having me. Go Raiders. Absolutely, absolutely. Take care, Chase. Yeah, take care, guys. Later, man. Bye. All right, well, there there you have it. Lengthy lengthy segment there with Chase. Very educational. We but learned. needed, but needed, right? But I mean, needed, needed, definitely needed. Not complaining at all. Love that. So uh, let's get into it. Um, quick hits. Raiders signed Demetrius McCray. Yeah, I saw that. 
So Demetrius claims that when he was in Seattle, the coaching staff <laughs> often confused him for Richard Sherman. I saw that too. Hey man, I think it was the dreads, bro. Yeah. Okay, let's 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 not let's not get big headed. <laughs> you you're you were able to come to our team for a reason. Literally big headed. Yeah. You know how I can tell the difference? Richard Sherman's not on the waiver wire. <laughs> quick, exactly. <laughs> quick hits. Get Smith some damn help, aka let's get Shalom Luwani some looks out there. Yes. We need Smith is slow. Okay, he's physical at the line. So there's a gamble there on the bump and run because if you jam a wide receiver and he still gets around you, gets gets a good release outside or inside, mm-hmm. there's a chance that you're beat because now you got to turn around, right? And you're definitely beat if you're playing bump and run and you don't even get a bump. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. So we need speed over the top. Reggie Nelson is not speed. Uh, I, I heard Jack Del Rio, you know, preaching about his leadership. Part of leadership is also on the sideline. You got to look over at Luana and go, kid. It's your time. Get yeah. in there. We're rotating now. Make a play. Yeah. Make Daddy proud. <laughs> so let's let's get uh let's let's get smith some help over the top luani was a ball hawk in the preseason exactly man exactly what i was gonna say he he was a ball hawk in the preseason and he he's known for being a ball hawk in college so what better way to help out smith mm-hmm. with the deep routes that he has trouble covering with a kid that's known for getting after that ball yeah um causing some disruption so in long yardage situations, I would really like to see Luani in there and passing yeah. downs. Just just mix it in. Do it early if you're not ready to gamble. Maybe we do it when game's tied or there's no score or we're down by three. Yeah. I, I get I get not wanting to gamble on that, putting in an inexperienced person, but at the same time, we gotta see what we got there. Yeah. You know, we're, we're seeing backups rotate in on the defensive line and stuff. And I know that's that's a different situation, but but where's Luani? Yeah. All right, quick hits. <laughs> Run the damn ball. Run the damn ball. I said it in the first segment. We talked about it. We This team can run the ball. I don't know what other people are seeing, but we can run the ball. Okay, we ran into good rush Ds two weeks in a row. Yeah. That's behind us now. We got the Chargers in front of us. They, they have an atrocious run defense. Exactly. Protect your quarterback. That also comes with running the football. And it's also important that we run the ball because we know that they're going to run the ball as well. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a battle for time, the, the, the time of possession. Exactly. And that's sure. the only way you, you, you stay in the game and you, and you give yourself a chance to win that time of possession is running the ball yourself. That's it. Still a time off the clock. <laughs> Get wide receivers in one-on-one matchups underneath. Chase already touched on it. Yes. It worked for us last week. Keep it moving, right? Keep it moving. Quick hits. <laughs> Convert third down. Okay, EJ showed us how to do it. He he reminded us that we can do it. Right. Derek Carr, you're back. You were the one of the kings of it last year. Yeah. Convert on third down. Yes, please. Come on. <laughs> Quick hits. We keep it moving. Uh pressure Philip Rivers and watch him cry. <laughs> Philip, cry me a rivers. <laughs> If there's <laughs> if there's one quarterback that we've been able to get after in in history, it's Philip Rivers. We have been able to just get under this guy's skin and enjoy his little bishing on the <laughs> sideline, man. Oh, he's he's got the the best resting resting bish face <laughs> on the sideline. Just that it, he gets red, and, yeah. and the cheeks are flush, and he's throwing the helmet, blaming everybody. Oh yeah, just pointing fingers. Yeah, that's the Philip Rivers I want to see by the third quarter. By the, it's not going to happen. I want to see him by the second quarter. Let's, if we, if he's like that in the second quarter, Max repeating his defensive yeah, player there you of the go. year. There you go. All right, quick hits. <laughs> Force feed Amari Cooper. Please. Uh, the only way to get out of a slump is to bust the slump, and you can't bust the slump unless you're getting opportunities. So let me give you a little analogy, a little breakdown. I was on the phone earlier with a friend of mine, and uh, – we were vibing on this because we both had a similar experience. He was talking about a friend of his, very shy, very shy person, and he had a hard time getting after the ladies, if you know what I mean. Oh. So a, a mutual friend was telling him, well, look, bro, this isn't baseball. I'm not worried about averages. <laughs> Just get out there and swing for the fences. Right. Meaning you're going to miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? Standard exactly. sports cliche. Yep. So if you're trying to bust a slump, if you're going through a dry spell, you just need to holler at every single opportunity that you get. There you go. Whether they're dimes or they're nickels <laughs> and everything in between, possibly below. It depends on your standards. I have some. 
<laughs> I'm also not single, but this applied to me when I was. You yeah. just you make yourself available. There you go. Man. Right? Yeah. Definitely. So get out there. Force feed Amari Cooper the ball. This guy's had, out of four games against the Chargers, he's had two major ones, and one of them, arguably his breakout game. Yeah. The birth of the bubble screen. There you go. I like to call it. I think Cooper can get back on track this week. I think he can too, man, but he can't do it without the ball. He can't do it without the ball. He can't do it by by himself. That's for sure. He's not going to be able to just go out there and have a breakout game. You got to get him the ball. Throw him the ball. Get him some looks early, please. Early. 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 He used to be our first reader, and I complained about that a lot. But maybe it's time to get back to that. And, and hopefully hopefully it's not a confidence issue. Not not with him. I'm not too worried about him. He's a pretty stoic dude. Yeah. I'm talking about with the quarterback. Yeah. Right? So have some confidence. Throw him the ball. Get him something easy. Get him open uh, on a quick slant, maybe a scissor route. Uh, set some picks up for him. Try to get him into some space. Maybe, hey, maybe bring the bubble screen back. Something, man. Something. 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 Quick hits. <laughs> Lastly, protect your quarterback. Yes, please. Please. You're looking up at the sky right now when you say that. I got to, man, because I, I got to say a little inner prayer, man, every, <laughs> every single time I think about it. Yeah. Protect Derek Carr, man. Let's, uh, let's not have another – I'm not even going to say it. Yeah. I'm not even, even going to bring it up. So, protect the quarterback, man. We, yeah, we, we did say that this is kind of injury that, that can get worse, but you can't agitate it and just don't give this coaching staff any reason to pull him because regardless of whether he can go or not, his pain threshold or not, if they see him getting thrown around like a rag doll back there, yep. they're just going to pull him out of sheer concern. That's what I'm saying. That's, and, all, that's, that's, the, other, that's the other concern I have for the, uh, as far as the short leash, right? Mm-hmm. Not necessarily that just he's, that he's playing bad, right? but that – they might just be afraid to lose him for the entire season. Yeah, like the the bubble wrap kind yeah, of philosophy. Yeah, yeah, right. So that's a quick hit, hit, quick hits segment. That's easy for me to say. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna move into the injury report, and then and then we will get into our full blown keys of the game. It's another long episode. Hang in there. We got a lot to talk about. This is how it goes when it's rough out there. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot to to break down. So uh, let's get into it. I've fallen, and I can't get up. This is your pillaging injury report. (laughs) So I'm looking at this right now. I still can't get used to seeing the Los Angeles Chargers. That's so weird. Apparently, their fans can't either because they're not at the games. (laughs) I was just about to say that. (laughs) Stole your thunder. Stole your lightning bolt. Uh, (laughs) Uh, Who's that guy's name? Uh, He's down in San Diego. Is that uh, Mad Dog? I don't know. They got that phrase down there. Show me your lightning bolt. I don't, know. I don't know. It's the most obnoxious thing I've ever heard. I don't know. And I just said it on my own show, so <laughs> go figure. Uh, so the injury report this week right now, we will go through the did not participate right now for the Raiders. DNP is Gary and Conley. Um, I'm not sure that we're going to see him back this season. I know they're saying shin splints, but I'm also hearing rumors that it's actually micro fractures in the shin. Well, I, I know I know that f- that he said, he's on the record for saying that it's not shin splints. It's not. He earlier in the season. Okay. He meant he said that he it wasn't shin splints. So so, so there's probably truth to that. So yeah. he did go, and then Jack said that it's it's a pain issue right now. So if there is micro fractures there, obviously as a corner, speed is your best attribute, and, and it's 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 hard to run when your legs are screaming yeah. in pain. Yeah. So a lot of people are calling him soft. I'm not ready to do that yet. This is his first injury. If it's truly that painful, we'll see what happens. If this continues to be sort of a an ongoing thing, then then maybe we can go that route. He flashed when we did see him on the field. So I'm still excited to see him. Yeah. Just really disappointed we haven't really seen him yet so far. And even more so after last week with oh. Smith getting burnt. If, if if he was healthy, is it safe to say that Conley would be getting a starting look right now? Yes. Absolutely, right? Yes. So we need him back on the field. Antonio Hamilton, also DNP, uh, pretty good special teams player for us. Also depth at that corner position. So that hurts. Uh, DNP, Markel Lee. So some good news came out of this. I was at the game. It looked really bad. I'm not sure how much of it they showed on TV, but he he needed help getting off the field. He was trying to put weight on it, and you could just sense the pain from the stands. I mean, you could just see it. Uh, Anyone that's ever sprained an ankle before, you know what that feels like. You're, should I put weight on it? Or, "Ah, nope, ah," you know, so that's kind of where he was. And uh, that foot was really just dangling. So it came out today. um, X-rays were negative. He's just dealing with a sprain, and he's walking again. Good. He's walking on Good. the ankle. Good. So he's probably, I'm going to say, I'm not going to put money on him going. I'm going to say he's probably not going to go. But there's a shot. Sprains can heal up pretty quick. They could be a little bit tender. But Wrap that's, it up. Tape that, it up. Tape it up, you know. 
stick a shot in it. Who knows? Um, Olawale going through concussion protocol right now. I don't have an update on that. He did not participate today. It being Thursday, that's not a good sign. Yeah. Um, so limited in practice today were David Emerson, Derek Carr, Amari Cooper still nursing the knee. I'm not really sure what's up with that. Uh, Gabe Jackson with a foot injury. It's come out now that that foot's probably been injured since the Washington game, which would make sense because we saw him getting bulldozed often in that game. And then Lee Smith um, did not did not participate. I think I already said no. Sorry, limited. He was a DNP on Wednesday. He's also dealing with a knee issue. Lee Smith's a tough dude. I would expect him to go. Yeah. And DeAndre Washington's come out, but it's a hamstring that's bothering him. Limited. Uh, again, I'm a big fan of Washington. He's not an absolute necessity on this offense, but I'd like to see him go. Yeah. Same thing with Olawale, man. O- yeah. Olawale, okay. I, I touched on. Um, a guy that that was average. He, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't have the numbers in front of you, but something like six point five yards per carry. Mm-hmm. Um, he only had two carries, but still, that's, tough. that's a guy that you want to get the ball to, you yeah. know, because obviously he's he's bringing a change of speed. So hurry up and get healthy, man. Get back, because uh, we definitely need we need all the weapons we can have. Now, with Carr's injury, I don't expect us to get out of the shotgun much. But again, with Olawali, when he's in there, that allows you to get outside of the shotgun. You can get into pro set formations. You can get an eye formation. He can be a lead blocker. And so him not being in there also kind of hurts our scheming a little bit. And he's a great pass catcher, too. He is. He's got good hands. I, I like him down in the red zone. Yeah. You know? Um, and so for the L.A. Chargers... Um, you got tackled Joseph Barksdale is limited. All these guys are limited. So Barksdale, uh, Jatavis Brown, Dontrell Inman, uh, Brandon Oliver, and then Mike Williams is going to be making his debut this weekend. So there was some – some. Uh, well, actually, no, these are Wednesdays. So it doesn't really change, but Mike Williams hasn't been on the field. They're, they're wide receiver. He is a threat. He's been dealing with a back injury, but it looks like he's going to step on the field this Sunday. So another person to account for. Um, we'll see who's matched up with him. It possibly could be Sean Smith. So you got a you got a wide receiver coming off injury, Sean Smith. This might be your opportunity to redeem yourself, at least in the short term. And um, linebacker Nick uh, Zubnar is uh, was a full go, and Adrian Phillips' safety was a full go um, coming off of a neck injury. So right now the uh, the Chargers looking pretty flush, um, very healthy, and uh, we're coming in pretty banged up. Yeah. All right, so we got a few loose ends that we want to tie up before we get up out of here. Um, Really quick, um, the game might be moved due to the fire. So as some of you might know, whether you're in or outside of California, this has been a big news story. Right now, California is on fire. 170,000 acres are burning right now between northern and southern California. The majority of that, if I believe, is up here in the North Bay, Napa County and Sonoma County. And those fires are out of control. The last I checked, it was at 170,000 acres with zero containment. And we're down here in the South Bay. We're about 116 miles south of Napa, and I'm 65 miles south of the Coliseum, and we have haze in the air. Yes. And yesterday was worse than today, but there was ash falling from the sky yesterday this far south of it. So it is bad. As you guys know, practice was cut short um, this week and, I mean, today and yesterday. So that's an issue. The NFL is looking into it. There's a few possibilities. Um, they're discussing moving it to Levi's, which I'm not sure it's to be – that much better, but it. I mean, it should be better. Be better than it'd be better than Oakland by a little bit. There's a little a, bit. there's a little bit of talk of of StubHub, even though the LA Galaxy is playing there. Mm. You, you kick those guys out. The, it's the NFL. <laughs> uh, but I mean, maybe that's an obstacle. And then um, there's there's Qualcomm. I'm not sure if that thing's still operational or what what's going on. But the mayor of San Diego said we're welcome uh, to go there. I'm pretty sure it's still operational because uh, SDSU plays out there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. That'd be something. The Raiders actually get a, an official home game in San Diego, yeah. even though we've been having them there for like the last <laughs> two decades. Uh, so that's a possibility. Um, the other one is is where the Rams play. The Rams are on the road this week, so the L.A. Memorial Coliseum, we would return there. That would be kind of spooky. Yeah. Uh, I really hope that they can get this game off in Oakland for a lot of reasons. That would mean the fires are more into control. Um, our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody up there. It's, it's really terrible to see that. Definitely. Uh, there's a family that had just moved back into a house after having lost their house in the previous blazes, and their house just burned down again. As you know, Raider great Cliff Branch lost his house, yep. uh, snatched a change of clothes and three Super Bowl rings, and got out of Dodge. Was it three? Two. Three. Three. Okay. Yeah, I believe he has three with us. I don't know. Hang me if I butchered that, but I believe he, I believe it was three. Um 
I believe we should give all our players rings. We should. We should. We should. <laughs> so that's something to, to consider. Uh, we got we got some people coming in, pillagers coming in from out of town. We got Nola Rick coming from New Orleans this week. So a lot of people are on standby right now waiting to see what they're going to do. Season ticket holders, I know they've offered to buy your tickets back from you. Um, so hopefully, hopefully everything's under control. I really like to see that game. I plan on being out at the tailgate. I may be in the stadium. Uh, we'll see how that that goes, but uh, looking forward to seeing everybody out there, and uh, looking forward to these fires hopefully getting under control in the next couple of days, and, and just restoring air quality. Schools down here, even in the South Bay, are having clean air days. That means no PE, no outdoor activities for the yep. students. So this is really affecting like the majority of California, and it's it's terrible. We're talking about it in football terms, but in real life terms, this is just a travesty. The the world is angry right now, um, just about as mad as Eminem is. <laughs> Maybe more. Uh, that's about as political as we get on this show. Sorry, guys. Um, here's here's something, too. The Raiders brought in uh, four players for trial this week. All of them were defensive linemen. Three defensive ends and one defensive tackle. Uh, one name that jumps out is Jay Howard, former Kansas City Chief. He had four years in the league. I'm not sure what happened. He got released, I know, by KC. Um, he got released, I think, this offseason. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know why they're potentially looking at defensive linemen. I, I guess to bolster that pass rush that just isn't there in the interior. Yeah. Um, and maybe you get some more edge rushers to keep that rotation fresh. But nobody's been signed yet, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, it's also a little bit of what Chase said, right? I mean, after uh, after Kowser, who's left? Yeah, there's, you know, so there's not much. Yeah, there's not much. Um, so we'll see if one of those guys gets signed before Sunday. Uh, McCray took Latham's spot. Latham, as you know, suspended for four games for the uh, substance or no, the ped, ped policy, right? Mm-hmm. Performance enhancing policy. So the sad thing about Latham is he's taking those things and it wasn't even helping him. So I hate to say that. I really hate to say that, but it was true. Um, another note that I have here, <laughs> Raiders, Raiders are actually, hold on to your seats, Raider Nation, the third highest ranked offensive line in the league. Yeah, as everybody goes, huh? <laughs> Everyone's like, what? So PFF has us grading out right now at 73.4. I know a lot of folks critical of PFF. So am I. Kind of a take it or leave it stat, uh, the way they grade things out. But um, we've given up 10 sacks, which is tied for fourth most in the league. But it has been actually the best pass protecting unit in the NFL. They've only allowed 14 pressures um, on top of the sacks and no quarterback hits. That's a total of 24 pressures surrendered on the season, and that's the fewest in the NFL by a significant margin. While nobody on that line is is playing at an elite status, everybody's far above average. Um, led by Rodney Hudson, his grade is right now an 83 with no pressures allowed all season. Yeah. So that's that's pretty interesting. Now remember, a sack is not a pressure. A sack is a sack. Right. So anything after a sack, outside of that, right? Mm-hmm. So we 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 are giving up a lot of sacks, but outside of that, it's been fairly clean. Yeah. I look for that to trend towards better as we move forward. I sure hope so. Again, we ran into two very stout defenses in weeks three and four. That's behind us now. It's time to move forward. Mm-hmm. Um, KC, I mean, sorry, uh, LA, a concern. You got uh, Ingram and both on the ends. Yes, you do. So we're going to have our, our work cut out for them. I look for Mike Tice to scheme around that, hopefully get some double teams there. I don't think the interior of their defensive line is as scary. And, of course, their run game, uh, not scary at all. So pass to open up the run. More traditional football possibly this week coming at you. Yeah. So have faith. I mean, the, the line's grading out. That means something. Yeah. So it's going to come together. I don't think – I think when you have a stretch like this that's that's this weird, I mean, it's just strange – it feels like that that's that's got to evaporate at some point. Yeah. I don't think that's what our hopes are, right? I mean, we're I mean, just like yeah. we're waiting for like this weird like everyone's just kind of like what is this and why is this happening right now? So hopefully we start to see this dissipate. We start to see a little bit of what we've expected. Yeah. What we've come to expect from the team. Um and yeah, man, get your ish together, y'all. Get your ish together. Let's get out there. Let's get after it. Let's get this win. Let's have Philip Rivers crying on the sidelines. All that good stuff. <laughs> Let's get back to Raiders football. Yeah, man. And, and no, no better week to do it, but uh, but against the Chargers, <laughs> the Dolts. Yeah, I sent you that that picture. It was the uh, Bud Light Chargers can. <laughs> it said uh, Bud Light's finally invented a can that won't leave rings on your table. <laughs> that was that was great. All right, Charger fan. I know you're listening because you got nothing else to do. Um, that's not true. You live in, you live down there and. Well, you're not in San Diego anymore. Where do you live? Where do you live? 
<laughs> Where do you live, Charger Fred? I was on the subreddit earlier this afternoon, the r r slash Raiders, and um, there was a Charger fan that was well, a former Charger fan posting in there that said he was actually looking forward to rooting against the Chargers this week. So he's now a converted Raider fan. Oh, so they're out there. Well, the bandwagon is strong with this group. <laughs> so uh, yeah, anything you want to add before we get out of here? No, nah, man. I, I think it, uh, another good, good, well captured show. It was good. Yeah. Um, you know, and just just a reminder. There's a lot of people jumping off the ledge. Yeah. Che and I are going to ride to the end we're of the ride, season. Hey, ride, ride or die, man. That's ride it. or die. We're riding to the end, and uh, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we get to be. I get to join you guys out there uh, next week. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, KC night game. Let's let's hope that the wind quality is better by then. Yeah, no, there's no yeah. risk of uh, of a change of schedule, but uh, but yeah, man, I might be out there. Yeah, well, so look look out for Che. He, he might be in the in the house. Look out. Um, we will be podcasting out there at the tailgate. So oh yeah, we're looking to get some fan reactions, doing some uh, parking lot interviews. Um, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I, I believe we have the gear to do it, and so we're gonna we're gonna try to pull that off. It'll be our our first on location podcast. So look forward to that. Might be a little bit of more of an abridged version. Um, yeah. But yeah, it should be cool, right? Yeah, man. Um, so I'm excited, man. Just before we get out of here, I want to I want to pose this this possible scenario out there, and this this might be far fetched, but if we can get a, a W this week, this is a winnable game, like it or not. This is a winnable game for the Oakland Raiders. Yep. We get KC on a short week where they got to travel to our house, and uh, if we could possibly hand them their first L. And maybe it won't be. Hopefully it won't be their first L by then. Yeah. But if we do, let's just say Oakland hands them their first L. We go to 4-3 and three on the season. We're now 2-1 and one in the division. Does the narrative change? Does it does, every- man. I think, I think wins against two divisional opponents mm-hmm. in back-to-back weeks mm-hmm. and against the only team at this moment that's undefeated in the league. Yeah. Completely changes the tide. Everything. Yeah. Momentum shifts. And in the beginning of the season, that was the box at the top of our list that needed to get checked was yep. beat KC. Yep. And uh, Derek Carr, you're at home, you're in a night game, and you got KC. So there's two monkeys you can get off your back right there. Your night game woes and beat beat, and beat, beat Alex Smith. Yeah. Beat the Chiefs. So uh, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but no. I'm just throwing that out there. This whole season can change in two weeks right now. It really can. So, so and, and of course, we're in must-win territory. We've been there now for a couple of weeks. It's time to get back on track. So keep hope alive. Just win, baby. That's what we always say. That's it. Uh, so that's it for this week's show. Tune in every week on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio. Call in and leave a message to be played on air. 408-909-PJFF. That voicemail line is always open. So anytime you feel like you got a little something, a little key to the game, a little tidbit, something that's bothering you, you want to get it off your chest, just pick up the phone, drop us a line, dump it in there. I will play it on the show. Uh, don't forget, we do publish fan submitted articles. So send us your best write-ups to see your work published online. I know there's a lot of first-timers out there, a lot of Monday morning, Monday morning quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, you want to flex your skills. Send it in. If you need a little bit of polish, I'll help you out. I'll do editing and all the articles. So we'll make you look good. Don't be shy. Um, go on the website. You will find the email on the sidebar there, and uh, you can just send it to that that email. Um, and lastly, get dipped in some pillaging gear. Head over to pj4f.com slash shop. We got T-shirts. We got flasks. We got beer mugs. We got can koozies. All that good stuff. When you got man. a pillaging can koozie, every Raider can, every can is a Raider can. That's it, man. So I know that there's some of you out there that have been looking for these Bud Light cans. Just get the pillaging koozie. There you go, man. All Just set. get the pillaging koozie, and then you don't have to drink Bud Light. That's it. You can drink whatever you want. And I, you don't have to drink Bud Light. That's yeah. the selling point right yeah, there. Yeah, man. I'm a big fan. I got the coffee mug because I'm a big coffee guy. And you can put anything you want in a coffee you cup. Put whatever you want in a coffee cup. <laughs> hey, 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 yo. yo. <laughs> <laughs> so as always, I'm Kenny Stapler, joined every week by your boy Che, and we out here. Peace, peace, go Raiders. <laughs>